Sometimes I get a bit jealous when I hear that one of my friends has never worked in fast food. I feel like, at least in America, working in fast food is like a rite of passage. It's 101 on not making you a terrible human being. So today, I want to talk to you about the time in my life where I worked in fast food as a delivery <clears throat> expert at a little place you might have heard of called McRomino's. It's for legal purposes. When I was back in college, one of my friends came up to me out of the blue and was like, hey, man, do you want to work with me at McRomino's? It's super fun, it's easy, and it pays great. And that's how I learned my friend was a sociopath and could tell lies to me with a straight face. I was scouted to be what they called a delivery expert. Not a delivery driver, no, no, no. We were delivery experts. Which, frankly, I'm going to say I valiantly earned the title of delivery expert, but a lot of my coworkers were more so, um, delivery apprentices. Fun fact, later I found out he got a hundred dollar reward for recruiting me, which kind of proves how few people wanted that job. Imagine having to bribe employees to trick their friends into working there. Either way, working at McGromino's wasn't all bad. The way I always described it is it's kind of like being in prison. You're forced into close quarters with a bunch of people you don't know and would never talk to under normal circumstances. So you need to either make fast friends with everyone or join a pre-established clique. There's always a ton of new faces and people constantly leaving. And there's a surprisingly large amount of sexual harassment that never gets reported. Also, someone gets shanked every once in a while. Wait, uh, wasn't I supposed to be describing this in a positive light? Uh... Look, all you need to know is as delivery experts, we were there for one thing. Those sweet, sexy, scrumptious, uh, sacred tips. So let me explain this quickly for my non-American peeps. Basically, tipping is a barbaric practice that's a holdover from the Great Depression. A company that employs you can pay you nothing, and you work strictly for the hopes and dreams that customers will be kind enough to give you extra money on top of the money they already paid for their food. Imagine if you showed up to work and at the end of each of your shifts, your boss could be like, eh, I don't really feel like paying you today, so I'm just not gonna. Uh, see you tomorrow, and make sure you're not late. I don't not pay you to not be here on time. Uh, yeah, America does that. We do, now, have a thing called the waiter's wage, which is between a whole $2.13 and $4.25 an hour. Riveting. With pay like that, heck, you might even be able to afford a single meal from the place you just worked at for eight hours. Not that you'll ever see that money, because if you're a waiter making tips, that all goes to taxes. So I was a lucky one, rocking a whole $4.25 an hour. So needless to say, living off of tips is one of the most stressful, terrifying, unpredictable ways of life. I loved it. Nights could be going terrible, and then boom, one good tip could always slip your night to a good one. A lot of the time, you'd go home pretty disappointed, but every once in a while, you get to be that delivery expert everyone was jealous of for the night. Yeah, um, now that I think about it, that almost never happened to me. Looking back, I actually had terrible luck, but frankly, what kept me around McRomino's for so long wasn't the sometimes survivable pay, but the job itself. The amount of interesting stories you amass by delivering to individuals who aren't willing to leave their house for 10 minutes to save 10 bucks is a bit ridiculous. So let me tell you some of my favorite delivery stories. Let me set the scene. This night was one of my many not so great nights and I had to deliver to an apartment complex I didn't really enjoy going to. Mostly because it has three stories and literally only the people on the third story ever order pizza there. So I'm delivering this order and this girl opens up the door and right behind her is her boyfriend. Maybe. I don't really know. He was busy feeling her up, which, may I add, isn't something incredibly unusual. But what threw me off this time was the fact that there was another girl right behind him that he was also feeling up. So, uh, good for that guy, I guess? And may I say, both of these girls are like solid nines. This dude was living the life we all strive for in his shitty apartment I had to climb up two flights of stairs to get to. 
So we do our usual thing. I give him the pizza, and he starts a spiel that I've heard a hundred times before. Sorry, man, I I'd tip you, but I got no spare cash. Those right there are the magic words. That's the, all right, screw you, I get it, I'm leaving. So I act nice, and I start walking away, but as I'm almost at the steps, I hear, Hey, man, wait a second, I got something even better for you. So I turn around to see this guy holding a crisp, $100 bill. Nah, I'm just kidding. I've never gotten that lucky, but instead I turn around to be greeted by this girl's breast. Okay, okay, I, I know what you're thinking. Hey man, you got to see a hot girl's breast for a tip. That ain't half bad, but I have a counter argument. I have access to the internet. Sure, this girl was pretty good looking, but I cannot pay my rent with a random girl flashing me her breast. I need money. And trust me, at the time, these were the exact thoughts running through my head. Either way, I was still caught off guard. I, I wasn't expecting that. So I just said the first thing that came to my mind, nice titties. Then I just walked down the steps. It just felt really weird because it's more like I failed a social encounter in a video game. Like if this were a porno, that was the closest I ever had to being, is there some other way I can help you with the tip, pizza man? But nope, not me. My dumbass just said nice titties and walked away. Another weird situation that would happen a lot more than you would expect is people answering the door naked. I'm talking about butt naked here, not a shred of care in the world. And let me be clear, I'm not talking about opening the door, oh no, I'm so sorry, then closing the door to like a crack and just peeking out. These people open the door wide open and act like they're wearing a brand new suit and they wanna show it off. I do not know why so many people are compelled to do this, but in my six years of working at McRomino's, I feel like I've seen more naked people than a porn star's camera assistant. I know, ha ha, Matt's seen a lot of cocks, but in reality, it's almost always women. Like 90% of the people who answer the door naked are women. And you know what? I think I would have rathered the guys. I go to the gym, I know what to expect from old men, I can mentally prepare myself for that. But have you ever seen a 90 year old granny who weighs 300 pounds open the door completely naked? And do keep in mind, she is a paying customer, so you just have to act like this is normal. Yeah, usually the people who are naked aren't the kind of people who you want to see naked. Now there were a few gems here and there, but those were far and few between. Now if you could keep a straight face, usually you got a decent tip, so that was always the payoff for dealing with naked customers. Look, I don't want this video to seem overly negative. I worked there for six years and there's a good reason I stayed. I genuinely loved most of the people I worked with and made a lot of good friends there. Not to mention, there is something quite magical about driving at midnight in the rain with lo-fi beats on in a town you have memorized like the back of your hand. The job was weirdly zen. It had a good mix of high intensity and chill sections, and like I said, I've gotten many different stories out of it. So I definitely wouldn't advise against working at McRomino's as a delivery expert. If I had to give you one piece of advice if you planned on working there, Tell them Manime Matt sent you. I could I could really use that extra 100 bucks right now. Hopefully we can return to do a second episode to talk about the times I almost got mugged or delivering to cokeheads and prostitutes. Trust me, this video only covered the tip of the iceberg. I also really wanted to thank everybody for the outpouring love that I received from my last video. It's not easy talking so frankly about my life and my relationship with this platform and how I needed to change things. I'm really grateful for how understanding and supportive everyone was. Thank you guys so much, and if you like this video, please subscribe. I do eventually want a goddamn silver play button.